So we heard from Eric Tanoi, who is a second-generation nurseryman, and he is fortunate to have his three sons continue in the family business, and we will get to hear from them today. The first is John Tanoi, who is the production manager at Greenpoint Nurseries. John received his bachelor's degree in horticulture from the University of Hawaii at Hilo and was part of the 16th class of the Agriculture Leadership Foundation of Hawaii. He is currently serving as the president of the Orchid Growers of Hawaii. There is a plantlet kit with step-by-step -step instructions in the flower boxes that you received from Greenpoint Nurseries. Open up your kits and follow John as he demonstrates microplant deflasking. Then he will discuss how to care for these anthurium plantlets that produce these beautiful spades that Hawaii is famous for. Hi, John. Thank you for coming in today to discuss how to plant and care for tissue-cultured anthurium plantlets. John? Aloha and good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for the very nice introduction, and thank you all for joining us today uh, in this current situation we are in, and uh, really glad to share with you what, we, what the industry is doing, and hope you, you pass this on to your students as well. So um, my name again is John Tanoy, uh, third generation farmer of family operated business in Hilo, Greenport Nurseries. I am the current production manager and oversee the production of our, uh, of our uh, anthuriums and orchids and such. So let's go over what you all should have received in your packets. Um, you should have received some of these in your bags as well. There's some step-by-step -step instructions and some care tips. You should have got a uh, six inch green pot here with some rubber bands. You're gonna save pretty much everything. We're gonna use everything that you received in your packets. Some chopsticks, I'll get into what these are gonna be used for later. We've got a bag of uh, Pro Mix Media, a bag of Cinder, and you should have got a Ziploc bag here with your flask of Anthurium plantlets. So I'm just gonna take this out. So what is tissue culture plants? Tissue culture plants is uh, the process, kind of what you can share to your students is another side of agriculture where in a sterile environment, a sterile laboratory, you can take any tissue of a plant. For instance, the anthurium, you can take the apical Mary stem, the highest growing point of the plant. Let's do this picture. You can use the leaf or even a side shoot and basically propagate this and turn it into several thousand plants from just one small tissue. So this is just a, kind of the science method for students that might be interested in the science side to get into this side and help farmers. Many people do not know, but anthuriums are a very slow growing plant. As I could just say in general for all ornamental plants, let's say from this size plant you all received, you won't get your first flower for maybe another year, not to discourage everybody, but uh, it's a very slow growing plant. So that kind of shows you the background story of ornamental horticulture crops and what really goes behind the scenes into growing this and the appreciation of it as well. So we see all these boxes you received to is from Dr. Tessia Mori of UH Manoa Sitar. She is the head researcher and breeder of anthuriums and orchids. So a uh, special thanks to her and the college for all their providing all these plantlets for everybody. And she, she will also be presenting later and elaborate a little bit more on the process. So what we'll do is I'm going to follow the step-by-step -step instructions that you guys all received. Um, we'll go with this, this form here. So let's start off with step one. Step one is uh, basically we're going to cover this pot first with uh, cinder on the bottom. Let me move some things around. Your cinder media that you all should have got. So I'm going to pour it on the bottom. Basically, this is just to close up all the tiny holes on the bottom of the pot. Just need a little bit, just enough to close close the holes. Go a little bit more. So this is just going to prevent the peat moss from slipping out, but also allow uh, airflow to go into the into the meat end for the plants. Go a little more. You can see here, I just put just maybe about an inch of cinder soil in there. So our second step is we're going to cover the cinder with peat moss or pro mix that you all got. We're just gonna fill it just about maybe halfway. Let's see this. So, give it a little bit more. 
So I forgot to mention in the beginning, you might want to lay out some uh, newspaper or wet paper towel. Uh, it's going to get a little messy, maybe a little bit watery. So just, just be prepared for that. Let me put a little bit more. So in the step two also says to, uh, we want to wet the meat thoroughly. So I have a spray bottle here. You can use a spray bottle, use a water bottle, or even simply just dip it in a bucket. So let's go ahead and uh, try and wet all this meat thoroughly. So basically what we're doing here with this pot, we're creating a little community pot, or we like to call it a compot. This is basically gonna be a, a mini greenhouse where we're gonna take these flasks, these plants from this flask that's actually sterile in here and acclimate it, or in other words, bring them out into the real world, uh, introducing them to the regular world, kind of just like a baby and start them off there. So let's check this media one more time, make sure. We're not gonna open this until we're ready to trans plant them into a bigger pot. So we want to make sure this is really wet. Okay. All right, we'll move on to our next step. Step three, we're going to take the microplants out of our boxes here. So you might want to just peel away some of this tape here on the edge. So this is the first time they're getting exposed. These plants are maybe I'm gonna say a year to year and a half old, just to show you the perspective of how slow growing Ethereum plants are. And now we'll see the reason why we have these chopsticks. Go ahead, get your chopsticks, break them apart. So feel free to use any other uh, tools you have to take them out, but I'll show you what we're doing here. So I also have this little tub that you, you didn't get in your boxes, but uh, I'm using just a plastic container. You can use your newspaper, wet paper towel, or a Tupperware container, whatever you choose. This is just to help wash away the uh, gel medium that's in this box. Let's open this up. So I don't know how many of you are uh, doing this with me or planning to do it later, but uh, feel free to type in some questions in the box and we'll have them answered for you as much as we can. So I'm gonna use these chopsticks to kind of just fish them out like sushi. Just gently place them into the water. We don't want to damage anything as much as we can. All right, that leads us into step four. We're gonna wash away that gel medium you saw. Gently pull them all apart, making sure we don't damage any of the leaves or the roots. Just gently tugging if you can see what I'm doing here. And an optional note too, you can separate them by size if you want more uniformity in your pot. So you'll, some of you may have a lot of extra, so feel free to put it in another pot you may have at home laying around or experiment with them. All right, let's break some of these up. See, I was just, just breaking them up very gently. If you look into the camera here, this is our plant. Let's, so our next step on our uh, directions is we're gonna plant these plants just to cover these bottom roots here, you can see. We're not gonna go too high because we're gonna kind of suffocate the plant. We're just enough to cover about roughly here, just to plant the roots. So that leads us into our step seven. This inside. So now we're gonna take our plantlets we're gonna grab one chopstick. Hopefully you guys can see me good. I'm gonna compact this a little bit. So with our chopstick, we're gonna kind of use it as a mini shovel. We're gonna make a little divot. If you can see it up here, we're gonna gently put the plant in the hole. Use your chopstick to press in the roots. Get it in there. You can see how much I'm planting it. How deep I'm planting it. Not very deep. So after we get some roots covered, I'm going to just use it to tamper and just to plant the plant in so it stays up straight. Remove this yellow leaf. So there we have our first plantlet. So I'm just going to plant a few more for the demonstration. 
So you can fill this whole pot up with uh, all these plants. You can do that, but it might just be a little bit overwhelming. And uh, again, you might suffocate the plants or they'll just kind of grow too straight up. I might just want to space them apart, maybe one to two inches. Grab more. Another example. Let's put a few more in here. So if anybody in, after this has any questions on this, you please feel free to email Judy Schilling regarding if you want to use this video to present to your students or if you want to run some kind of small project with your students and we can coordinate something to help you to do this with your students. I'm going to put one more here. We're gonna have about five plants in here. Let's just put one more in that center. So this variety you received has just been released by Dr. Amori. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe about uh, a little over a year ago. This is a pink potted variety, very beautiful flower, free flowering, so you get a lot of flowers in it. Um, so basically, this is what your community pot will look like. All right. I got uh, six plants, I believe, in there. So you can fit in there as much as you want as you experiment, but uh, I recommend something about six to eight plants for this size pot. So leading us to our step nine, we're going to take that Ziploc bag you guys all got. use this as a cover for our bowl. But what I did earlier was I cut one off. I, I chopped up a Ziploc bag just to keep it a film like this. All right, I'm gonna use the, all the rubber bands. To cover this plastic. Let's see how I pull the sides here. We wanna make sure this is tight and kind of air sealed. Let's put some more rubber bands on here. There you have your first transplanted tissue culture plants here. So I, on the other instructions that you received in your packet, uh, the, you, the theorems are more of a shade loving plant as well as you, you mentioned, you heard from my dad that uh, more shade plants for ornamentals. You wanna keep this in a shaded area if you have a greenhouse at your school, at your home. Keep this by a windowsill. In, uh, patio, someplace with a little bit of uh, indirect sunlight you're going to get every day. Don't want to keep it in a dark area. And we're just going to leave it as is. You're not going to need to water it. Not going to need to open it. Um, like I said earlier, this is like a mini greenhouse. What's going to happen is your, your moist meter will evaporate, will collect here and drop. It's like a mini greenhouse, mini rainforest. So this will be about, uh, in the instructions you got, this will be about, I'm going to give it a three to four more months. If you do see a better growth, then you're doing a good job. Once you see the roots kind of harden, you see a lot more root production here. Uh, especially if you see the leaves touching this plastic, that's a good sign to take them out of this community pot, put them in a bigger pot, and you have your first uh, transplanted tissue culture plants. Um, fairly easy to take care of. Uh, but again, if you guys have any questions, please, please feel free to email us. Uh, and um, yeah, thank you for joining us. Thank you, John. We can see now that the tender loving care will allow these anthuriums to grow into beautiful plants. Uh, a viewer sent in this question. What other ways can we reproduce anthuriums? My grandfather used to pull them apart. Are there seeds or divisions? Excellent question. For anthuriums, 
Um, you can do that. It's kind of the traditional propagation method. Uh, you may see them grow super long, then you can cut them off into sections and plant them. You'll get an offshoot. But over the time and years, that plant will slowly, you'll see slowly to kind of diminish in a sense. So you might want to get new plants, which you could get tissue cultured plants, or sometimes you see Ethereum plants with a bunch of noses, look like a witch's nose. Those are actually seeds. But that seed production will take about, so doing it traditionally by seed pollination, you're going to take about one to two years, while at this tissue culture method, you're going to possibly cut the time in half, and even, you know, we're, we're uh, multiplying the plants by thousands. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. We got another one that came in. How sterile do we need to be in this, working with this project regarding the pots and the uh, working environment? Good question on being sterile. You know, it's a very good question. So far, it's not too bad. We want to keep it in this, we transfer it fast. You don't want to leave this overnight or a week. So do it all one time, put it in the pot. The plants will hopefully be hardy enough. They're healthy enough as being a sterile, clean plant where they will grow prolifically and you should have really good results. They keep on coming in, John. Yeah, keep them coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am on an outer island without black cinder. What can I use instead of cinder for the bottom of the pot? Cinder, instead of cinder, use anything, to be honest. Gravel, you can, you don't absolutely have to use a pro mix on the bottom. You can just fill the whole pot up with pro mix. It's okay. Uh, but yeah, you're not only stuck to cinder, you can use any kind of, uh, I should say coarse material, something a little bit bigger, even uh, vermiculite, things of that nature. Another question. Can we do this, uh, this procedure here with uh, most tissue culture plants? For the most part, yes, you can. In theorems are, as it's anything, all plants are different, but it's traditionally more similar, I would say. Okay, now, looking at your pot there with your cover, do we poke holes in the plastic cover? No, we don't want to. Uh, this is gonna be kind of like a mini greenhouse, a mini terrarium, you could say. So, you're gonna leave this as is, you're not gonna remove the plastic until you're ready to plant into a bigger pot. Uh, this, if you leave it like this for a week or two, you'll start to see it start to develop evaporation, some drop water droplets on here. When that happens, you can, just tap the top, they'll fall down, rewater everything again on its own. Fairly, fairly simple. It's self-sustaining in a sense. Thank you, John. Thank you.